Hi, George here, and today we'll be removing a person from the background using Photoshop Elements. How often do you get a shot like this where you like the foreground looks good, and there's somebody just in the background kind of messing up your shot? Easy fix, but it takes a little bit of attention to get this exactly right. The problem in here is going to be right along this seam here, right along this edge with this glove. If I used the subject select, it may or may not grab part of that person. That won't really work best in here, so I'll have to do this as a manual selection just for this part and right down along there as well. Okay, the picture I'm using is from Pixabay. Let me bring that site up here, and that's right here. I'll put this link in the description so you can go right here and download this. Just click on download. One I'm using is 1920 by 1280, it's that one there. Just choose download, download it to someplace on your computer, and then open that up in Photoshop Elements. Okay, back to the project. So to start this off, I'll go to the selection tool, the tool I'm using is the Polygonal Lasso tool. It's set at a new selection, and I have my feathering set at one pixel. We can now zoom in. Now I'm using the wheel on my mouse. You can kind of scroll in and out with the wheel on your mouse. Real easy way to zoom in and out. That, by the way, is an option. Go up here to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences and General, and it's right over here, Zoom with Scroll Wheel. Real nice little tip in there. Okay. Hold the space bar down, it gives you the hand so you can then move things around a bit. There we go. And this now make a real careful selection right along this edge here. I'm gonna zoom in a bit further and you see how it has kind of a soft edge right here? What you wanna be is right inside that soft edge, right along that edge right there. I'll back up just a bit and I'll start up here just out of the area that we need. And with this tool you click and make a dot and then Photoshop Elements comes in and puts a line between your dots. Now this tool can be kind of fussy. If you click too fast, it's gonna collapse the selection. So you take your time, click a dot, give it a beat, find your new spot, give it a dot and so forth. And just work around. If you have little curves, just put a lot of little small dots around that curve. And that will then bring it in. And I just place it around here. Sometimes if you see it do this, I'm just moving my mouse to get a better position. There we go, and I'll work around. And just go just around the part that you need to mask out here for the figure in the background. Now, of course, if there wasn't an overlap, it'd be real easy. I'd just use the regular lasso tool and do a big lasso around that person in the background. But because this overlap, you need to be a little bit more careful with this. Okay, right around this finger here. And at this point, I'll hold the space bar down. Let's move our picture up. They can come outside here. Now you wanna be just a little bit away from the background person, but not too far. And just do a careful selection right along this rock in here. That's our next area that needs to be a good selection. Take that right up around here, and then a little ways outside again. And now I can go pretty fast. Make sure you don't click too quickly on this again. So there you go, I actually click too fast myself. If that happens, it collapses as you can see. Come down here, click on Add, and then come just inside your selection. We can continue making our selection around. There we go. So not a problem, just a little bit of a hassle that occasionally happens with this tool. Let's come around to our beginning point. Because I'm adding in, I wanna come back inside of the selection, and then back to my starting point, which is right down here. If you look at that cursor, it's a little hard to see, but there's a plus sign. That means I'm adding in a new point. If I get right up against the beginning, it'll change to a zero. That's where you want, click at that point, or double click, and it will then close that selection out for you. Okay, scroll wheel back out, about that far. So here's our basic selection. Now before we do anything here, I want to make a copy of my background layer. Right click, duplicate layer, choose okay. There's our copy. Always work on the copy when you're doing anything like this. And then go up here to edit, come down to fill selection, and then set this at content aware fill right here. Mode normal, opacity normal. If you wanna have better instructions on how to use tools like this content aware fill, I have a great new tool that gives you really good instructions on things like this, written instructions if you wanna have that just to make this a lot easier. Let me show you that real fast. And it's right here, it's a new site I've set up that gives you text instructions, step-by-step -step instructions for anything that you're looking for Simple one click and you can find that. Let me log in and demonstrate. Here's the main page, go over here to the PSE coach. 
and right here, I can either do a search over here, just looking at the list of tools, or easier, just go up here to the search box, and let's just type that in. Content Aware, here's our Content Aware fill. And here we go, step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the Content Aware fill. As you can see, real easy to use this tool to get that information that you want. Or let's take a fast look at that Polygonal Lasso tool. Just begin typing. There we go, Polygonal Lasso tool. Click on that. And here's step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the Polygonal Lasso tool. So real great tool for giving you that additional information if you're looking for that when you're working on these videos. And of course, it works with any video, not just my videos. So great tool for learning how or just reminding you of the steps to use any of these different tools. Okay, let's get that out of the way. I'll put a link for that in the description if you want to find out more about that. Okay, so here we are, fill there, content aware fill, click on OK, and that removes that. Now what the tool does is it looks for stuff around and then fills that with content from around. Notice it grabbed part of her arm in here. So we need to fix this. So our next step here is the clone stamp tool right here. And again, there's more information about the clone stamp tool as well in my new program. And here we're going to be copying from one place and then pasting into a different place over here. I'll come down here. You can adjust the brush size right down there. You want the opacity at 100, and you want this as a soft edge brush. And that's good. Hold the Alt key down and click on your Copy From location. Then come up here. Notice you can see kind of a line there. That's that line. You want to align those lines if possible. And I'm just painting from that one spot over onto this new spot. And we'll just paint in and clean that all up. You may want to come back in and reposition a couple of times for the best results. And then once you've done that, take a look for anything that's duplicating. You see right here, it's kind of a funny shaped rock, almost looks like a little animal right here. It's duplicated right there. We want to lose that. So I'll come down here someplace, Alt and click, and then I'll just cover that up. And that looks really good. Now to remove that selection, just use the Control D keyboard shortcut. That's fine. There's a little bit of a line showing right here, real subtle, but I'll just grab some of this stuff here, Alt and click, and just put a couple of taps in there to hide that line, and that looks good. And let's just zoom back out again, and there we go, we've now removed that person from the background. Let's show our background again, there it is before with that person, and here I go with the person removed before and gone. Easy to do, as long as you take your steps carefully. The real trick on doing a good clean job here is to come in and make a very careful selection right against any overlapping areas. At this point, we can then go on and do anything else we want to with this image, adjust our contrast values, colors, whatever you want, it's all set to go. Don't forget to take a look at that new tool that I have put together, which makes it real easy to work along here with Photoshop Elements. Again, there's a link for that right down there in the description. Don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.